Yeah. Now that you've disconnected, can we all stand to our feet and turn our Bibles to Joshua chapter 10? Joshua chapter 10. And when you have it, say amen. Joshua chapter 10. I am so honored by the presence of God in this place. <clears throat> See, if you're like me and you've been in church a lot, you get to the point where you don't want to be there if God isn't there with you. And I am thankful he's here with us. Joshua 10. We're going to read. 6 through 14. Joshua 10, 6 through 14. Now I'll start with you and I'll drop out and let you continue. And the men of Gibeon sent unto Joshua to the camp of Gilgal, saying, Slack not thy hand from thy servants. Continue. fled before Israel and were in the going down to Bethron. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hasted not to go down about a whole day, and there was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord had hearkened unto the voice. Uh huh. And all Israel with him into the camp of Gilgal. Hmm. That's it. That's it. That's all I need. That's all I need. That's all I need. That's all I need. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon and thou moon in the valley of Agilon. And the sun stood still. And the moon stayed. One more scripture I'm going to read to you. Proverbs 18 says, Death and life are in the power of the what? Uh -huh. I want to teach if I can. I really just want to talk to you. Because God started something last Sunday. And for some of you, you've been warring mentally about those things that were said. 
And so I come to help jump on the right side and jump the side that's doubting what was said. So I want to talk to you from the perspective, talk crazy. Look at your neighbor and tell them, talk crazy. Father, in the name of Jesus, Dad, we need you in ways we can't even describe. But Dad, we do know that we want better. And Dad, we do know that we want our lives to change. So Dad, say whatever's needed and necessary so that we could have it. We are sick of being dreamers. We want to be manifestors. Let it be so. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and thank God. Before you sit down, I want you to take your hand, your right hand, and put it over your mouth. And I want you to say, there's power in you. You may be seated in the presence of God. To be told uh, that you are talking crazy or to tell yourself that you're talking crazy is dismissive. It is disregarding because it is literally saying that what you just said or what you are saying, A, is impossible. And B, what you are saying or what I heard you say or what I am saying doesn't make any sense. It, 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 it doesn't make sense for you to tell and speak that you are going to have a solid marriage that's going to stand the test of times when everybody you know is divorced. You're talking crazy. How, how, How do you say that you are going to start businesses that will stand and be there so that you could pass it to your family? You don't know nobody that owns a successful business. You're talking crazy. How how can you say, after doctors just told you that your cancer is getting worse, that by his stripes you are healed? When your mama died from cancer, and when your grandfather died from cancer, you're, you're, you're literally talking crazy. How can you say that you're going to be a lender and not a borrower when you just borrowed $300 from me last week? You're, you're, you're talking crazy. What you're saying don't make sense. And what you're saying on the basis of what I see is impossible. Let's take a minute and think for a second. Have you ever said something crazy? Something that if someone heard you, it wouldn't make sense to them. Something that you wouldn't even say out loud because you know they would dismiss what you're saying. The basis of your reality of what you live. Let's go deeper. Have you ever told yourself you're talking crazy? Why are you talking like that? God ain't about to do nothing. Why why, why are you talking like that? Yeah, God is God and he loves you, but, but, but is he really gonna open up the windows of heaven for you? Yeah, 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 I know God is God and we've seen him bless other people, but, 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 but you're talking crazy. God, we just going to work our little job and go home and, and, and go to sleep. Don't do too much. Don't speak too much. Don't hope for too much. Don't, 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 don't say that you're going to be different. You're going to be like everybody else you know. You're talking crazy. Don't say that you'll be better than what your father was. You're talking crazy. Your father wasn't even there in your life. Don't, don't, don't say that you are going to be a solid woman, a successful woman, an effective woman, a, a, a non-catty woman. Every woman you know, messy. You're talking crazy. The, the, the different thing about this crazy talk that we have to rationalize and understand is that talking crazy is relative. Stick with me. It's, it's relative. Say it's relative. 
Relative means it's not automatically eternally true every time you hear it or see it. Relative means it's a case by case situation. It's conditional on the basis of the knowledge of the person or the purpose of the person. Stick with me. If indeed you were asleep and I pushed you and said, wake up, and you opened your eyes and got up and said, go right down the corner and turn the street and it's right there to your right. Now off first glance, I would say stop talking crazy. But I'm ignorant about what you was dreaming about. Because what if in your dream someone was asking you for instructions? And I woke you up in the middle of telling them. And so therefore my ignorance does not necessarily give way to your truth. Stick with me. Stick with me. I'm dealing with your brain this Sunday. A lot of y'all thick headed so we gonna work. <laughs> to say that the person's sleep is crazy is dismissive. To say that they're crazy because they woke up giving directions is disregarding. But it might not necessarily be true. Which means now, were they really talking crazy? Or are you just ignorant of some of the information? Were, were, were they really talking out of their head? Or is your knowledge of what they were saying limited? Because if you had the opportunity to be aware and privy to their dreams, you wouldn't say they were crazy. In fact, they was doing what they were supposed to according to the scenario of life they were in. Now, if that could be true about you on the outside, looking at the inside of someone, saying they're crazy because you don't know a lot, could you be doing the same thing to God? Could you say within yourself, that the thought that your life would be better is crazy. Could you be saying to yourself that the thought of having a sound marriage is crazy? Could you be saying to yourself being savvy in business is crazy? But you're saying it's crazy because you're ignorant to what God knows. God is all-knowing. God knows everything. And the danger is to be in a position where you disregard yourself or what you're saying because God didn't make you aware of all that he's willing to do. And again, I wonder, have you told yourself you talking crazy? Have you dismissed your hopes? Have you dismissed your dreams? Have you dismissed things that God spoke over your life? Have you totally given your back to things because to you it don't make sense or it's seemingly impossible? I, I, I wanna come to you and I wanna tell you first, not so fast. Because you being crazy is a relative statement. It's relative on the basis of the knowledge of your purpose. True knowledge of purpose will expose you to a level of talk that's stupid to everybody else because it won't make sense and it will always seemingly be impossible the danger now is when we dismiss this thought process we are dismissing the Bible your Bible is full of crazy talk your Bible is full of Jesus walking up to blind men telling them they're visionaries wait that's crazy talk he's been blind his whole life what do you mean he's a visionary 
Your, 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 your Bible is full of Jesus telling a man, a sinning man, a cussing man, you can walk on water if you come. And whether we dismiss the fact that he doubted or disregarded, let's start with proceeded it. Peter did walk on water. Crazy talk. Jesus told lepers, go show yourself to the priests without touching them, without speaking healing to them, without speaking life to them. And they were healed. Jesus told a boy who father disregarded him, who mother cared not to speak up and defend him, whose siblings overlooked him and told him, you are the next king of my people. You, you're watching and reading a Bible where God went up to a drunken man and told him, I need you to sober up, baby, and start building a boat. And I don't want this to be any boat. I want this to be a cruise boat. And, and, and it sounds crazy because he's a drunk man and he talked drunk, but, but God yes. speaks from knowledge. And we live at times in ignorance and I wonder again have you called yourself crazy but to God is truth I have to make you aware of this because you will disregard one of your powers one of your powers is in your mouth that there's power to speak a thing and according to the purpose of God and what he designed for you to have, heaven will back in support the thing that you spoke. But if you are ignorant, see, you got to understand the truth of God, the purpose that God laid up for you is the parameters in which you live. And any and everything that you say in between those parameters, heaven will back. The angels will support and God himself will anoint. You're saying then, I've spoke before, but it didn't happen. Let me tell you why. Because you spoke outside of your purpose parameters. You cannot speak a thing and expect for God to honor and support anything that's outside of what he purposed for you to have. But anything within that framework, anything within that frame and that box and that foundation, you could say to me the craziest thing. But your God will support it. Put your hands on your mouth and say, talk crazy again. What happened to you? When you were a kid, you said exactly what was in you and you didn't look for it to make sense. You didn't look for someone else to say it's possible. You didn't look for the permission of men. You didn't look for the confirmation of women. When you felt it, you spoke it and it was. What's happened to you? Has pain caused you? To speak less has pain caused you to doubt your power in your mouth has people mistreating you and disregarding you caused you to rob yourself of your power put your hand on your mouth again and tell your mouth there's power in you, power in you. I'm telling this to some of you because even while you are full in the middle of your purpose some breakthroughs isn't going to come from fasting and some breakthroughs isn't going to come from sowing seeds and some breakthroughs isn't going to come from rolling out on the floor but the breakthrough will come when you speak the crazy thing the thing that doesn't make sense to anybody the thing that if you don't be careful you'll say it don't make sense to you but as long as it's within the confinements of the purpose God spoke you serve a God that will back the crazy thing 
So when you do say I am healed and God's purpose your body to be healed in spite of what the doctor says he will pack it. So when you do speak that I'm coming out of debt in spite of your bills God will back. Once you know what's yours don't put a muzzle on yourself. Speak it and stand on it and know that I will not let how crazy it sound to you make me shut my mouth. How much silence do you live with because you are intimidated by what another man and woman thinks? What are you not saying that you should say that you choose not to say because you are afraid it doesn't make sense to somebody else? I declare to you a level of confidence that doesn't reside in your perfection. It don't reside in how people think, but it stands firm in the purpose God gave you. Put your hands on your mouth again and say there's power in you. I dare you to start speaking I dare you to start talking I dare you to start saying it's going to change and, and my school bill will get paid and, and my house will be paid off and, and I will pay this car off and, and my business will get taken off the ground and, and my platform will expect because it's possible that your silence is causing your struggle. Your silence. What you are not understanding is that God gave a key in your mouth to then tell God to unlock it and he don't, don't mean that you don't have the victory. No, 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 no. The victory is yours. But what God isn't going to do is go punch in and go back to work. See, he's already did it as Jesus. Walking for years as a man and God. Are, are y'all still with me? Living amongst us. Teaching amongst us. Walking amongst us. Healing us. Loving us. And he put a foundational church together. And he's now off the clock he left you a key and said greater works shall you do than what I did while I was on earth God is not getting off the throne to go to work for you you are empowered you have the key to unlock your own door. And whenever you're ready for change and find out what God purpose you, open your whole mouth wide and speak that I'm here, but I won't always be here. And speak that I'm dealing with this, but I won't always be. And speak that I'm facing this, but I won't always face it. Because there's power in my... Yes. Yes. The next group of people that I want to talk to are those of you who've spent the majority of your life speaking out of bounds. Because the majority of your words have been outside of the parameter of the purpose God spoke over you. You've convinced yourself that you have no power in your, in your mouth. And my question to you is, why would you do a wrong thing and allow that to influence you on a true thing? You, you, you're telling yourself, ain't no power in my mouth. I talk like everybody else. I say stuff like everybody else. I've said stuff like everybody else and ain't nothing happened. But the truth is, you're speaking outside of your parameters. I, 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 I was talking, I was counseling a married couple 
and they singers, they in ministry. And, and, and the lady said that uh, this lady told me that my husband is hers. And I was mad. And I was up in arms. And I almost jumped over the pulpit. And I almost told her what time it was. And so I looked at her and I said, let me talk to you. And I this, and I that, and I this, and I that. And I said, ma'am, uh, this marriage that you are in, did God purpose for you to have it? She said, yeah. So if God purposed you to have it, did he purpose her to have it? No. Well, why give attention? <laughs> to what she has to say. Because, Pastor, you know, when you speak stuff, eventually it'll happen. True. Within the confinements of the purpose that God spoke. Which means you could say a whole lot of stuff and none of it will ever happen because you are outside of your bounds to speak it. And whatever you say, if God hasn't permitted, you could speak until your mouth fall off. You could speak until your lips swell up. You could speak until you sound like God himself. However, nothing will happen because it's outside of your bounds. Touch your neighbor and say, speak within your bounds. Yeah. If you speak within what God told you you can have, there's power in your words. If you speak within the confinements of what God died so that you can walk in, there is power in what you speak. And I wonder, have you spent more time talking out of bounds than you have talking in bounds and allowing that and the information thereof advise you on whether or not there's power in your mouth? talking this to some of you because I want you to win I, I, I want you to have everything God said you're meant to have I, I, I want you to walk in each and every bit of it but the thing that I do understand is there is a real war and there is warfare and one of the ways to win the war is praying and it is fasting and it is sowing seeds but another way to win is to speak God has a tendency of speaking that whenever he wants something to move he don't just think it but he speak it see I remember when, 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 when I studied and read Back when, when Lazarus was sick and, 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 and he died and when Jesus got there to heal him, when they walked Jesus in front of the grave because he said, show me where you laid him down. He stood in front of the grave and said, Father, I know you always hear me, which means I could think it and you could hear me. But because of everybody else, I'll speak it out loud Lazarus come forth why did he do it why didn't he just think it it's because of the victory of influencing somebody else when you crazy enough to speak to a dead thing and it comes to life and I watch you do it I could then walk to my own grave and say if it happened for him, it can happen for Tell your neighbor to speak. It's not just about you. It's about who's watching. Tell your neighbor again to speak. It's not just about you. It's about your kids. Tell your neighbor to speak. It's not just about you. It's about your grandbabies. Tell your neighbor again to speak. It's not just about you. It's about your followers on Instagram. 
touch your neighbor again and say, speak. It's not just about you. It's all who's affiliated with you. Touch them again and say, speak. It's not just about you. It's all that's privy to see you. When you shut your mouth, you limit the power of God and the life of another man and woman. God wants to use you as a testimony to say if God could do it for them, he will do it for Your victory and all those that's close to you is waiting for you to talk. And when you start talking within the parameters of your purpose and quit the doubt talk and quit the negative talk and say the craziest thing, I declare to you that heaven will back it and the angels will support. I don't think some people agree with me. Therefore, I'll give you Bible. God told Moses, in fact, he told Joshua, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. But what that didn't mean is as Moses got the victory, you're going to get the victory the same way. I have to share this with some of you because some of your predecessors, be it spiritually and naturally, God was with them. And God told you, I'm going to be with you as well. But the problem is you think you have to fight like they did to get the victory. That when God does a thing, he do it through one person. And when he get to the next person, it's the same God. It's the same successful ending, but he moves in a different way. Just like one man, he laid hands on his eyes, but to the other man, he spit in his eyes. He does that because he wants you to rely on the blesser and not the method of the blesser. See, 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 you have to understand that the way, the method, the mode in which you fight and get your victory, it will not be the same as those that came before you. And you got to be flexible and, and say, however, I got to win this war. I'm willing to fight it. Yes, God, you are with me, but that don't mean you're going to do it with me like you did it with somebody else. I'm saying this to some of you because some of you are heartbroken because God gave you front row seating at how he blessed another woman or man. And you walked away saying, oh, I thank you. Oh, you are real. Oh, you will bless. Oh, look what you did. Now, since you did it for them, do it for them like you. But, 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 but let me address your heart and let me address your expectation. When God says, I am with you, that doesn't mean I'm going to bless you like I did one of my other kids. Are you with me? And so Moses, one with God a certain way, and God was with him. And now Joshua have to win with God another way, but not the same way it was with Moses. I'll prove it to you. There was a defining war. The children of Israel had to win. And you know the story. Moses took his staff and didn't go hop in the war, but he went climbing up a mountain. He climbed and he climbed and he climbed and he climbed. And when he got to the top of the mountain, his assistant Aaron and her, they, 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 they were there. And, and while he was at the top of the mountain to win the war, the Bible says he lifted up his hands. And when he lifted up his hands, the battle was waxing on the favor of the children of Israel. And when he dropped his hands, that they began to lose the war. It was so important for that old man to keep his hands lifted. It was almost on one accord and, and parallel to the success of them winning the war. And so they held up his arms. And when that got too tight, they put rocks up under his arms because they had to keep that old man's hands up because the way he would win the war is with his hands up. Joshua, in like manner, is in a defining war. 
God told him, I have given you the land in Canaan to possess. Is it okay if I just teach this Sunday? It's okay. I'll, I'll preach next Sunday. God told the children of Israel, Joshua, I have given you the land to possess it. I have given you the land to possess it. I have given you the land to possess. Are y'all catching what he said? I have given you the land. I've given it to you. Now it's your job to possess it. I got to deal with some of you who've God given things, but you don't possess it yet. See, see, that's not far fetched. That's the way God moves. God give a thing, but he expects for you to roll up your sleeves and possess it yourself. He's given you the marriage, but you got to roll up your sleeves and possess being a good person. God's given you being a lender, not a borrower, but you got to roll up your sleeves and know how to budget and take it. I've given it to you, but you got to go and take it. It's yours to be taken. And so here Joshua is. One war to defend the Gibeonites. And he's faced with every king that lives in the land of Canaan. Stick with me. I've given you the land to possess it. Okay, so since you've given me the land, people live in it. So, so I have to take over them. I have to possess them. I have to kick them out. And here's a war where every king that's in that land is looking Joshua dead in his face now. Hmm. This war is everything. This war will make or break our success. If I win this war, we possess the land. And so you know the story. As they ran their way and made their way up to come and defend the Gibeonites, there are all the kings that live in Canaan. And as they make their way, God drops down things, boulders, that set on fire to help assist them as they get there. That's why I'm trying to help you understand first. You don't ever have to be afraid of whether or not the opportunity will be robbed from you. If God designed this opportunity for you, you will have to do everything you can to do your part and let God do his. What's that? God won't let it slip, but God will do supernatural things to make sure that the opportunity to do everything you need to do to get to the next level is taken advantage, even if he got to stick his nose in it. God says, here's an opportunity that you might not see again, boy. Five kings in one spot. I'm not going to let it be robbed from you. Therefore, I'll throw rocks from heaven. Because I won't let you be robbed. I'm saying this to some of you who are anxious. Because... It's an opportunity and you don't want to miss it and you can't sleep and you can't eat because you don't want it to be taken. Rest up. Touch your neighbor and tell them to rest up. Do you not know that God will stick his nose in your business because he will not let this opportunity. So as I close, uh, he throws rocks and made a fire and they fall and and, and, and they killed and slew a lot of the men trying to get away. And so at this point, Joshua and the chosen men of Israel, they made their way down the mountain. And they off their horses, pull their swords out, and they are getting it. I mean, they swinging, and they stabbing, and they punching, and they kicking, and they're biting because they got to win. Because if we win this war, we got the land that flows with milk and honey. And while he's fighting and while they are winning, he looks up and the sun is setting. Before I get into the sun setting, let me deal with how he had to fight. I just told you that in order for Moses to win, he had to get away from the battle and hold his hands up. But, but, but for the Joshua, or Joshua's that's in this room, you can't sit back and expect for it to work out just because your hands is up. But you're going to have to roll up your sleeves and get dead in the middle of the dirt. 
dead in the middle of the war, dead in the middle of the fight, and God will give you the victory right in the middle of the fight and not away. Are you willing to jump dead in the middle of your fight and not run from it because you want the victory? But I'll leave that one alone. So he's in the middle of the fight. He isn't saying, God, why you won't give me a staff and let me go stand up on the mountain and hold my hands up? I ain't got time for that because my victory is more important than how I get it. I want to win. I want to be successful. I want to be out of debt. I want a healthy family. I want God to move in the platform he gave me. I, I want to win. Therefore, I'm flexible to how God want me to win. Are you flexible with how God wants you to win? I'll get out of that too. So he's in the middle of the fight, and he's fighting, and he's fighting, and he's fighting, and the sun go down. Fellas, if the sun go down, we lost them. Fellas, if, 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 if the sun go down, man, man when are we going to get them all again together? And the land that flows with milk and honey is going to be taken away from us. Where it's going to be longer for us to get it. We're going to have to fight these guys one by one if we could catch them. Because they may hide. They might sneak. They might sabotage. I, I, I don't know what we're going to do. I'm, I'm doing what God told me. But things that's out of my control seem like it's playing against me. Have you ever done what God told you to do, but things out of your control is playing against you? Th th things that you can't control. You, you can't control diseases running through your blood. You can't control this thing getting passed down to you. You're doing all you can and stuff happens you can't control. You can't control whether or not your mama and daddy stay together. You can't control whether or not they are effectively in your life. You can't control whether or not people are going to stay with you and support you. You can't control whether or not people are going to stay and have your back. You doing the God thing and in the middle of doing the God thing, things happen that you can't even control. You can't control people as much as you like to think you can. As much as you like to think you could pre-think and you got game and you understand and you strategic and I'm analytical, at the end of the day, people are people. They are immanageable. And as soon as you think we're going to do one thing, they switch and they do something totally different. And now you're trying to do a God thing, working to function, moving in the purpose he spoke, and something happens it's out of your control. What do you do when something happens that you can't control? Because whether we want to tell the truth or not, you're frustrated with God because you're trying to do the right thing and things that you can't control is happening. And so the question is, God, what do I do? Do, 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 do I shout it out because I went to church and they told me to shout and I did that and, and, and it worked sometimes, but, but, but this time it, 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 it's not working. I, I went and shouted when I seen debt come, but that didn't stop them. They took me to court. I went to the car lot because I needed a car and walked up to what I wanted and shouted in front of it, and they still told me, sir, you don't approve for this car. I, I went to the house that I wanted and shouted in front of it, and they still told me, your credit's so bad, you, you, you might can't get an apartment right now. 
and I'm trying to do the God thing. God told me to do it. I'm within my purpose to do it. He spoke over me for me to have it. But man, this stuff is happening and I can't control it. And so this Sunday, I want to tell you what to do when things happen out of your control. The thing that Joshua did in the middle of looking around as blood dripped down his sword, as he see women and men fighting for the sake of God, as he look around and see men and women giving their lives, and then he look and see the men and women that's already been killed for the fight. I, I can't let them die in vain. I, I, I can't let this opportunity go to waste. They're dying on my word. I can't let their life go to waste. And I'm in the middle of the support of men dedicating their lives to the purpose of God. While the sun is going down. And I don't have time to go to church. I, I, I don't have time to write a check and go put it in an offering. I don't have time to call my prayer partner and we touch and agree. I know what I'll do. The Bible says he looks up at this sun. This sun that seemingly is taking his victory from him. And he says, son, stay there. And as the men are next to him fighting, they look over and say, Josh talking crazy. See, 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 okay, he, he's commanding legions. He's telling the left side to go and the right side to go. And I understand his war plans. He's screaming out while we're fighting. But did he just tell the son to stay still? That's crazy talk. When we ever seen the son stand still for a man? Maybe I'm hearing stuff. Let's keep fighting, boys. And then you heard him say, and moon, stay over the valley. Okay, stop. I thought I was hearing stuff when I heard him say something. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. We'll fight in a minute. Now, I thought I was tripping when I heard him say son. I thought I was hearing stuff. But did we not just hear him speak to the moon too? What's, is it, is it, is it bloodlust? Has, has he been at war for too long? Seems like Josh going crazy. We need to pull him out and we take it until he, you know, get his feet under him because we're talking to the moon and the sun. And they looked up. And can I tell you something? The sun ain't moved. Wait a minute. Let's keep fighting. We tripping. You know, you can't really look into the sun. Well, let's keep fighting. Let's keep fighting. And, and, and then four hours later, the sun is in the same place as it was when Joshua told it to stay still. We tired too. Let's keep fighting. And they fighting and they fighting. And then they look up three more hours. And the sun is in the same spot. And then what just happened ceases to be crazy. Now, was it prophetic? N now, was, was it he got power over the sun? Not like, what, what is this? And I'm going to tell you what it is, and I'm going to send you home. Joshua was purposed to lead the children of Israel into the land of Canaan to possess it, to kick the kings out of it and their people and take it for themselves. And here he is in the middle of a war with all five kingdoms in front of his face and he's winning. The sun is going down 
But his purpose says that he'll have victory over them. The moon is coming up, but his purpose says that he'll have victory over them. The stars look like they're getting ready to peek out, but his purpose says he has victory over them. The clouds are starting to roll, but his purpose says he has victory over them. And he speaks. And on the basis of what he says, falling within the confinements of his purpose, God honors it. Joshua wasn't just walking to the store to get him a pack of Skittles and some chips and felt like he wanted a long sunny day and said, sun, stay still. And it happened. Joshua didn't say we gonna have a family picnic and I want to make sure that the sun stay out longer because you know by the time we get in the park we got to wait for a good space then we get the space and by the time we chill we the, the sun gonna be gone sun stay stay no 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 all of the frivolous ways that he could try to speak a thing and expect for it to happen was not the reality but he spoke it within the confinements of the purpose God gave him. The purpose said that I will win over these people and I will have their land and they are right in front of me and I'm winning this battle and they are running from me. Son, stay down and moon, you better not go another inch. And God honored it. Not just because Josh said it, but because it fit within the parameters of his purpose. Let me talk to you and close. What are you saying within the parameter of your purpose? You doubt whether or not you have power at all. If I were to stand you up right now and say, speak over your life, some of you may do it, and others may just do it and not believe it, and others won't even do it. You'll just stand there like stuck on stupid because you don't understand the opportunity to use some of the power God gave you. It, it became that way b b because you've spent more time Talking outside of your parameters. Let's go further. And you dwell with people that all they do is talk outside of theirs. Your people you walk with. The people that you spend time talking to. The people that you text the people that you claim to be your closest and your tightest and, and your road dog and your best friend, all they do is run their mouth outside yes, sir. of the parameter God gave them. And so it's a culture of people just running off at the mouth. Just saying stuff to be safe. And what's going to happen? And ain't nothing going to happen. And they tripping. And, uh, 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 and I'm good on them. And they ain't going to do this. And they ain't going to do that. And I ain't going to do nothing. I'm just going to always be asking for money. I'm always going to be single. My marriage always going to be problem. My business ain't never going to. And I don't know. Maybe if I was white. Maybe if I was something else. It could. Trump messed up all of my plans. What? You dwell with people who give off loose chatter. The thing I want to teach you about God is God don't give off loose chatter, baby. Because when God speaks a thing, it becomes exactly what it is. Listen now. I urge you, stop giving loose chatter. Talk within the parameters of your purpose. Listen 
and say the crazy thing. The parameters for you is God's said your body is healed. Say stupid stuff like, I don't care what them doctors talking about. If anything, I'm just helping them uh, pay their bills because I just go see them and it's good. You know, they get their bill money and take care of their family. But I ain't thinking about what they talking about because I am healed in spite of what they say and in spite of what they think and in spite of their test. Uh, Dr. Uh, so-and-so said it's getting worse. Bump what he says. I'm healed. Stand on it. Uh, it from, from the CPA says from the looks of it financially you don't seem like you're going to make it out of debt until 35 years from now and so if you get on this budget in 35 years you'll get out of debt okay cool thank you so much for your help I appreciate it and go get by yourself and say bump what they just said I'm going to be out of debt and I give myself three years to do it And if I got to tighten my belt here and, and, and chill out on this and, and not waste money there, I will. You know, we all, you know how we get with men. You know, we don't listen to no man. Ain't nobody got time for that. Go get my check and we do our own thing need no husband to tell me what to do and you like us <laughs> you thought I was like y'all I'm different my life will end different I love all y'all but my life ain't y'all's and it's not going to play out the way y'all's did. You, you, you know, you know, men, I had one of my family. You know, we, you know, we hustlers in this family. If we ain't in jail, we on our way. That's what you thought. I'm different. I speak success over me. See, 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 it's crazy talk to them because it doesn't make sense to them and because it seems impossible, but it fits within the parameters of what God spoke. I am different. Yes, we share the same blood, but we are not the same. Speak it. You have power to speak your life different and speak your life negative. See, I, I might do it next Sunday. I don't want to go too deep into it, but I will walk you through how the prodigal son talked himself in every area of his life. Father, give me my stuff. Give me the stuff that belonged to me. Spoke. He spoke money into him. And then went and wasted. Now he fooling with pigs. Bible says he came to himself and said, there are servants in my father's house that has more to eat than this. I will go. And went. I wonder how much your life looks at what you speak and takes its mentorship. If you say it won't get better, won't get better, but if you start talking the crazy thing and forget who's around you, so you gotta understand Josh was in the middle of a war care about what they think he gotta win when will you stop caring about what people think yes. 
Everybody stay where you are. Bow your head. I, I, I want to pray, but I want you comfortable. There are some areas in your lives that you are literally afraid to hope for something else. You tried hoping for it before, but it ain't pop off like you thought. You you, you want it changed, but it didn't really happen like you thought it would. I want that thing that you are afraid to hope for Look at it. Stare it in the face. If it's a better marriage, stare it dead in his face. If it's your health, look dead at your body. If it's your bank account and the lack thereof, look at the number. Subtraction sign in front of it and all. Now, what did God tell you? Did God tell you it would be better? Did God tell you that it would be different? Did God tell you that by his stripes you are healed? Did God tell you that he honors marriage? Did God tell you that he is a lender and not a borrower? Did God tell you that your purpose and the success therein is yours? Look at it. Now I'm about to tell you to do something crazy now. And when I tell them, I want y'all to go up high because I want them to have their own business for the nosy folks. In fact, everybody stand to your feet. When you get stood, eyes closed, head bowed. Because we're getting ready to do a crazy thing. I want you to start talking to your reality. I want you to scoot over away from who you next to. I don't care if you got to walk in the aisle to show business, scoot over. They don't need to eavesdrop. You could walk to the back. You could come to the altar. Makes me no difference. But we are getting ready to put this in action. Before you do it now, You have to know what God purposed you to have. And whatever God purposed you to have. Look at how your life don't look like it. Yeah. And now that you see it. Not running from it, but you see it face to face. Not hiding from it. But I will stand. I want you to start speaking to it. I want you to speak what needs to happen for change. I want you to start speaking what's gonna happen. Speak change. Speak difference. Speak different reality. Speak it. Now speak. Speak. Talk to your life. Speak. 